going to try and persuade you that everything that they say is lies. Um, so hopefully we'll have a, have a good debate. Um, so if we first of all take a kind of uh, a, a starting vote so that later we can decide who's won on the swing of votes. Um, so just, you know, proposition, opposition, or abstention. Um, so I just remind you of the motion, which is, this has believes the current climate change discourse of catastrophic climate change is failing to bring about environmental sustainability. Um, and then who would like to vote in proposition? So for the motion. Um, Uh, votes in opposition. Um, and votes in abstention. People yet to be. Everything, the whole world's in trouble. 
it's our decadent Western lifestyles that are doing this, but there's nothing else you can really do about it. And that's turning them off. And that gets latched onto by anybody with an agenda or with oil to sell, basically. And it completely politicises the debate. Um, it creates ammunition for ideologues to basically attack the science, create misinformation, and, uh, and basically you know, try and make people believe that they're not actually doing anything wrong because, like it or not, people would rather be ease, they'd rather be comforted, they'd rather be told that what they're doing, that, that they don't need to change. Um, and, and it's the emotive language, it's saying that something is catastrophic, it's saying something that is rapid or is worse than we thought, or that climate change is, is particularly catastrophic because these, these, these words are meaningless, they don't have any quantification. So if you don't, if you don't use these words, then there's nothing that anybody, there's, there's nothing that can be used to, to argue against this. You know, it's catastrophic for who? Catastrophic where? Catastrophic when? Okay? If we don't say words like this, then, then, then the ideologues and the right-wing media can't latch onto it and they can't, they can't attack it. Um, in 1997, there was a 4% difference between Democrats and Republicans on, on climate change, on like their, how much they thought it was a problem. In 2008, even before the Climate Games article, it was already 34%, and it's the overuse of, a, of emotive and catastrophic language that's done that. We should remember that politics isn't the maximisation of rationality, it's an art of finding compromises between different ends of the spectrum and, and coming to compromises to make uh, positive strides by using political language, by, by allowing a political argument to, 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 uh, to evolve by using catastrophic language, we're basically shortening those strides that can be made. So, it's the, the problem with, with catastrophic language is, it is the antithesis of the scientific language. It doesn't work, it's square pegs into round holes. Um, we, you know, we live in a democracy, it's vital to government to support to get anything done, um, and we fail to do that, which is creating junk science. So, what can we do instead? Um, we, haven't, we haven't engaged the public, we haven't been able to, uh, to change their perceptions of climate change and to get any kind of policy created. So what we need to do is instead of treating climate change as this big, big thing where we put everything in, we put in every environmental issue that we can think of, we put in deforestation, we put in water security, food security, poverty, whatever, put it under a banner of climate change and say, let's fix this. That's not what we do, we start from the ground up, we start from a bottom up approach and we say, right, we, we do this organically, we create markets, we create, um, we, we create opportunity, we create the ability for people to, to make money out of clean tech, out of green energy. Okay, we build them up from the bottom. We can't be doing this, this thing where everything goes into climate change um, and we try and create this great big structure where, like the Kyoto Protocol, where everything gets fixed because it doesn't work. Okay? And so by, by turning people away from the catastrophic and saying that everything's going to be ruined and saying, look, we can do something here, we can, we can save for deforestation and as a byproduct of that, then, then we, can, we can do something to mitigate climate change. That's the way to go because otherwise we, we, we're not doing anything right now. So my points are that the public understanding has dropped, uh, political gulf has widened, so therefore it has failed. There is no way you can say it's failed. It hasn't failed. We, are, we have been evoking fear and sin that has not worked. Um, and the catastrophic language has given those with vested interest the chance to erode public trust, which they shouldn't have had. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bertham has illuminated the speech and his impeccable timing. Um, and welcome, Andrew Parks, to close the case for the opposition.